Fuji Plus is significantly faster set. It's going to go on here. We're going to seat it with finger pressure. We're going to check to make sure it went down. So I've got my Explorer here. Um, just We can't see the margins now, so you're just feeling that it went down. And then you're going to use your wood stick for a full gold crown. That means putting it in and asking the patient to bite through the stick. You want to crush it, okay? So when you uh, get it get it in, you want it to come out of the mouth. Bite mark. Looking crushed, okay? You don't want to have them bite on the stick, ask them to bite through the stick. You really want the pressure. Because the goal, one of its advantages is that burnishability if your margins are good and you do that, they're going to be great. It really improves the fit of the margin simply by having that extra pressure. You have to make sure the opposing tooth is sound. You have to make sure that you don't have sensitivity in the area. Uh, alternatively, you'll use one of the wood sticks, sharpen it down a little bit, put it on, and then you take whatever the biggest instrument you have that has a handle on it. These are in the clinic. These are in the clinic in the in the mobile supply case. Okay. So at this point, you're following the set of the Smith, and I wasn't doing that carefully. So at this point, it's about where I want to clean up. It almost looks rubbery. I say crumbly there. It depends on the cement you're using, but you don't want to let it get hard. So it will actually peel off if you try to clean it off earlier. You smear it off, and you get cement on everything. It sticks to the tissue. It sticks to the teeth. It sticks to the cheeks. And you don't want to do that. Just leave it alone and feel it, feel it, feel it. And when it gets to this kind of rubbery or flexible stage, that's when you want to peel it off of the tooth, buckly and mingly, and then push it through the proximal. Just take your explorer and push it through. If it won't go through, pull it out to the buckle, pull it out to the lingual to get rid of the bulk of it, and then push through. Generally, that's going to get rid of, of all of the cement you give it at this stage. I'm holding this down while I'm doing this. You know, the cement is holding it down, but not perfectly yet. And once you've got that taken care of, your final step is going to take your floss and make sure you don't feel any bumps or, or lumps in there at this point. So go through like this. Now, one thing is shredding the floss. Why is that? It actually feels a little looser on the mesial now and tighter on the distal. When we had the crown without any cement, it could give way a little bit when we were flossing it. Now it doesn't have any new way. So it's a little loose on the mesial, a little tight on the distal. That's the sort of shift that we're just going to have to accept. And you have to have the patient let you know if it's an issue. But sometimes you just don't know that. We had that die space right there. There was a little bit of give in there. All of that room's taken up with the cement now. Now the flexibility of, of, the, of the tooth is all we've got. So we've got a tenth of a millimeter of, of uh, periodontal ligament fluid in there, space that we can get movement in a day. So it's going to take care of that as long as you check it afterwards to make sure it's okay. So, um, so you know, it's a little bit tight on the distal, a little bit loose on the mesial that you would just check out. You, you wouldn't be, oh my gosh, we've got to cut it off and start over. But the other thing I was doing was feeling the, con the proximal to make sure it's good and smooth in there. Now, you should have the patient bite back down. You can even check with the mylar and stuff again. But we've added the cement in there. It might not seem the same as it did before. Now, if the bite feels high in this situation, where the contact is tight here and loose here, we could be shifting 31 distally. So what they're feeling is hyperocclusion on the mesial of 31. So I'd probably be very shy about adjusting occlusion for the first couple of days. Make sure they came back in and check it later. You don't want that to happen. And usually it doesn't. That's not a common thing. But it does does happen and, and can be an issue. But um, you just want to check it. And as long as it feels comfortable, we just have to give post-operative instructions and water it up. What, what do you think might happen after submitting a crown? Can they go home and eat on it? The submit sets in 15 minutes. I mean, they are incredibly mature. So there's really no problem unless you gave anesthetic. That's the big issue. If you give anesthetic, you tell them no food until they can feel their legs. You know? Make sure you check other surfaces. So right here, there's some impression material between 28 and 29. Uh, that could be cement after cementing. This could be cement up here between 3 and 4. You have to look around at other areas because otherwise you'll have patients come back and say, 
crowd feels pretty good, but it feels awful up here on the top. What's going on? There's a piece of cement stuck there. It's great calculus. It's just rough. It sticks to the teeth, and you have to make sure it's cleaned off. Um, also, occlusion. If you go to check the occlusion afterwards, oh, it really feels high now. What happened? You look, everything looks good. If you got a little piece of cement stuck up here, it's going to feel hot. So that's another thing to check for. So we sent them home. Our post-operative instructions should be expect some cold sensitivity. Why is that?